Uh, my name is uh, C.T. Chen. I'm from Hong Kong. And uh, so first of all, should I, should I get started? OK, yes, OK. Uh, so today I'm going to uh, uh, tell you a story about the science of science fiction. Okay. Uh, when I was a student, uh, maybe like some of you uh, young ladies and gentlemen, at your age I tried to become someone that can write science fiction. But my teachers told me at that time in my high school, they say that I should not do that because anyone who can write something must be imaginative. And he said that someone like me is not imaginative and therefore do not try to be a writer. So I was to try to be a civil servant or work for a government, something like that instead. So when I get my degree, I try to work for the government, but the government doesn't want me. And so I end up doing science and become a scientist. Somewhat unfortunately, but it uh, turned out that you know, science can also be exciting. And so today I'm going to um, tell you something that can be potentially quite interested. Now, I'm from Hong Kong, and actually I'm from a university called the uh, Hong Kong University. Uh, of uh, uh, Science and Technology called HKUST. Uh, uh, this is Hong Kong in, at night, and, uh, and this is what our campus looks like. Okay. Now, uh, so today's talk would be uh, absolutely non-technical, so, uh, because I know that the audience uh, would be not necessarily uh, area of physics, uh, just in case that some of you uh, might be interested in the details. I just need some paper that we uh, published on this topic uh, in these past few years. And I also take this opportunity to acknowledge uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Lai Yun. Actually, uh, most of the stuff I talk about today would be uh, done by him. And there, of course, are other collaborators in this uh, effort. Okay. Now, uh, what I'm going to talk about today and also uh, tomorrow would be about uh, things like this. For example, uh, Harry Potter's invisibility cloak, and uh, whether you can uh, scientifically uh, succeed in making uh, the so-called platform uh, uh, three quarters of the, uh, so in the course of the King Cross station, uh, when Harry Potter get to the train to this school. That would be today's topic. And tomorrow I will talk about Star Trek. You know, Star Trek, this is uh, 24th century technology. There's something, for example, what they call tractor beam. The Star Trek uh, spaceship called the Enterprise, when you want to grab something from outer space, it doesn't need to take anything mechanical. You can simply send a beam and then it can suck something uh, to itself. I want to explore whether this or that is uh, possible or not, okay, from a scientific point of view. Now, uh, just to get ourselves started, let me just uh, uh, show you what I mean by this uh, scientific stuff. So uh, let me show you some. Uh, Sorry, uh, this is Harry Potter. Okay. So Harry Potter got a gift from his uncle, which is a clock. Tie-dyed velvet. Well, we'll see them. Put it on. Oh, uncle Hallowman. So what this clock does is that when you put this clock around yourself, you become invisible. Okay. So this is what I want to talk about today, to see whether you, we can do that or not. Stop that. And uh, so this is uh, Mr. James Bond, W007. Now, look at these are not real people. These are illusions, OK? Then your new transportation. Maybe you've been down here too long. The ultimate in British engineering. You must be joking. As I learned from my predecessor, Bond, I never joke about my work. Aston Martin call it the vanquish, we call it the vanish. Oh, very good. 
Adaptive camouflage, tiny cameras on all sides. Oh, so uh, these movie clips, I'm sure that most of you might have seen it in the movie theater. We're talking about actually two kinds of concept. Now, the Harry Potter's clock is what we call a passive clock. It is something that you do not need to supply any power. Simply, it is a passive device in which you just take it out, just wrap it around yourself, and you become invisible. Okay. Now, the James Bond's uh, invisible car is something more advanced. It is something that can be controlled. You can push a button, the car can become visible or become invisible, depending on what the user wants. And also, in the earlier part of the James Bond movie, in this Mr. 007, he is shooting at someone, practicing an emergency situation. But these uh, bad guys, they're not real people. They're, in fact, illusions, but they're so real that, that for, for Mr. James Bond, when he's doing this, uh, this uh, drilling, this practicing, they appear to be real. So it's some sort of illusion. So today's talk, I'm going to, to, to tell you scientifically how far can we go. Is there any possibility of making a clock like Harry Potter's clock? Or is there any possibility of making some, some, some kind of devices in which I can push a button and make something look like some other thing? There is empty space, I look, at, look like there's someone there, or I can push a button and make a car disappear. So I will see how far we can go. And um, let's go back to uh, the PowerPoint. Board. Now, uh, this, this talk will be non-technical, but uh, it happens that uh, I'm just obliged to show you that, in fact, all we are talking about are phenomena involving electromagnetic waves. And these are uh, light, microwave, X-ray, laser, light bulb, iPhone, and all uh, you know, related to uh, what we call electromagnetic waves. Now, the equations that govern how the, what we call the EM wave uh, behave uh, written down by uh, James Maxwell more than half a century ago, and uh, uh, in today's more modern form, it's written by a British engineer called Haveyside. Uh, but uh, we are not concerned with how we solve this problem, but except that I just want to tell you that, that uh, solving these equations, they look deceptively simple. In fact, this is, uh, they, are, they, they are not very friendly. They are very nasty to solve, but uh, we managed to solve them in some locations. Now, so, Today's talk is that actually we are talking about something that looks rather, at least quite improbable, if not impossible. But the point I want to, to, to tell is that these uh, uh, invisible beam, uh, invisibility or shelter beams, uh, they are traditionally regarded as impossible by orthodox science. Just a few years ago. Now, but uh, we want to show you today that they are in fact possible, but at least in principle, and I want to emphasize that while these are more or less academic exercises, this new knowledge okay, may help us to build a foundation for next generation technology. And actually, some of these uh, uh, knowledge may be used uh, quite uh, almost immediately. And of course, to do this, it requires to think out of the box, because orthodox science tells us that, no, don't do it, because this is not possible. But I just quote some uh, famous writers, and someone said that, okay, the great pressure in life is doing something what people say that you cannot do, okay? Maybe for the young people, uh, I think this is a very good um, sentence to remember. And also there is a, a very famous uh, British uh, uh, science fiction writer, uh, Arthur Clarke. And for those of you uh, who are old enough, who have seen this uh, 201 Space Odyssey uh, movie, it was in fact written by him. And uh, there is something that he say, and something which is very uh, interesting, he say, he said, anything that's sufficiently advanced uh, is indistinguishable from magic. So I'm going to tell you something that is really uh, so advanced that it almost looks like magic. Now, but before I begin to talk about invisibility, uh, let me clear up some concept that to some people, it may be confusing. Now, I'm sure that all of you uh, may have heard about the concept of stealth. Uh, I want to tell you that stealth is not the same as invisibility. Now, what is stealth? Stealth actually means that there are some military uh, instruments, okay? like for example, a, a military fighter or maybe a, a warship, that they are not visible to radar. And or in more precise terms, that they cannot be detected by the enemy's radar. And these things are called stealth objects. Okay? And a good example is the so-called F-117 fighter of the American Air Force. 
And, but these things are not what we are going to talk about. Now, let me explain to you uh, in very simple terms how this works. And uh, this is a computer simulation. Suppose that we have a 747, okay? And you know the 747 is the, the body is like a cylinder, so let me just take a cross section, and the cross section will look like a circle. Suppose that I have a radar coming in, and suppose that this is my missile coming in, I want to track, and then I want to hit this 747. And this is computer simulation sim simulating when the radar comes in, what the radar, the radar is in fact a electromagnetic wave. Okay, and, and when it comes in, what happens is that the radar would, the, the missile, the tip would have a radar that sends a EM wave. Suppose that this is my 747, this is my missile. The missile will send a radar, a EM wave, and then it will hit the object, and the object will reflect the wave. The wave will come back to the missile. You have detector in the missile. If I can detect the refracted wave, then I know where you are, I can track you, and then I can, I can, I can destroy you, right? This is the way that a missile works. And so suppose that this is the missile coming in, the sender radar, now look at this simulation, that this circular cross section is going to reflect the wave back to my missile's detector. And therefore, I know where you are, simply because I send a signal to you, I s receive the reflection, then I know you are, and then I can follow you. This will happen to a 747. But suppose that you have instead a, uh, a F-17 in which the cross section is more like triangular. Then what will happen? Then it will be something like this. Suppose that your, your, rate, your, your missile is sending a signal in. In fact, this flat cross section will reflect the wave to some other directions. And therefore, the tip of my missile in which I have a detector, I will not detect the refracted wave. And therefore, you are there, but I don't see you. Simply because the wave that I'm sending in to detect you will be reflected in a different direction. And therefore, I don't see where you are. And so this is, in very simple terms, how these, uh, these optics work. But these things are manifestly not invisible. Okay? They are simply doing some tricks in which your detector fails to detect. And there are ways in which I can, in fact, uh, see you. Now, for example, if I don't have one missile, but in fact, if I'm rich enough, I have a lot of money, so that I don't buy one missile, but I buy 10 of them, and instead of hitting you with one, I tend 10 or two, I tend 20 in an array. If missile A doesn't detect you, missile A will detect you. I'm assuming that there is a data link between the different missiles so they can talk to each other, so, so some of them would see the refracted wave. Or if I have a radar that is coming from the bad side, then you will leave a shadow. So this type of so-called stealth, in the uh, sense of a term, they are in fact quite visible. Okay, so stealth is not the same as invisibility. Now, what we mean by invisibility today would be basically what the movie clip of uh, Harry Potter shows. Something that is perfectly transparent as shown in these uh, cartoons, or at least something like which is semi-transparent as in the movie uh, uh, Predator couple of years ago. Now, the question is that we want to, to see whether scientifically whether we can achieve something like this. Now, but for mankind, maybe invisibility has been uh, something that's very fascinating. Therefore, for a very long time, people have been thinking about this problem. And surely in the literature, uh, there has been uh, novels and movies talking about that, and probably the most famous, famous one is the 1897 uh, fiction by H.G. Wells, we call The Invisible Man. Now, uh, in, in that book, and how the writer said that someone can achieve invisibility is by what we call chemical means. So basically, uh, this gentleman can prepare some kind of chemical solution, he drink it, and after a while, the chemical reaction inside your body, and then you become invisible. Now, I'm not a chemist, I'm a physicist, I have no idea whether this is uh, chemically possible or not, but I can assure you that this is a very, very bad idea. For, at least for two reasons. The first reason is that, suppose you can drink something that makes yourself totally transparent, but I don't think that you can make your clothes transparent. So at the very minimum, you can take off all the clothes to make yourself invisible to others, because something 
this, you are not visible, but I can still see because you have the clothes wearing on. And so something like this may work in Saudi Arabia, in which you have reasonably warm temperature. But suppose that you want to do it in Northern Europe in the winter. Uh, that would be a very, very bad idea, right? And you can almost for sure that such a kind of very drastic chemical change in which I drink something to modify your body. Now, for those of you who have done some physics, how can I be totally transparent? The only physical possibility is that you become a refractive index of one. And if you transform yourself to have a refractive index of one, I'm pretty sure that you can only only once in your life. <laughs> because afterwards you'll probably be a dead man. And so this is a very, very bad idea. So, so this probably, I don't know whether it's chemically possible or not, you certainly do not want to try that, even if somebody wants to sell this technology to you. Now, and uh, in fact, I have, maybe I can uh, skip that uh, movie clip. Um, now, there is in fact a smarter way to do things. Uh, for those of you uh, who, have some you know, understanding of American culture. I think the American culture have a lot of these uh, uh, superman, superhero, and super ladies. And one of them uh, is the so-called invisible woman. Now, okay, thank you very much. Now, uh, you can make it yourself herself invisible, uh, not by changing herself, by creating some kind of a force field around herself so that anything that comes towards her, no matter whether it is bullets, or you throw a stone at her, or you throw some photons at her, you throw some light at her, all these waves will be deflected around her and go around her, so that, so that you, don't, you, you cannot touch her. And if it is light go around her, then you'll find that she is transparent, and then you don't see her. Uh, and thereby she becomes invisible. You can't see her. Now this is absolutely a fantastic idea. It doesn't tell you how she did it, but this is very nice because if compared with the invisible man, which tried to do something to his own body to make himself invisible, notice that this lady is not touching herself, so she's only modifying her environment. Now this is absolutely superior. Of course, the, probably the superwoman is more modern idea than the invisible man, but in any case, I think this is again a, uh, I find it a manifestation that in many cases, ladies are smarter than men, so this is uh, I think that, but the idea is very important. If you want to make yourself invisible, never touch yourself, try to change your environment. Now, this is something, which, in fact, what uh, is the, the right way to go. Now, uh, so, and of course, Harry Potter is this way. Harry Potter doesn't drink anything to make himself invisible. He wears a cloak around himself to make himself invisible. So it is, again, not touching himself, but changing the environment. But of course, remember that Harry Potter is written by a lady, so it is very important <laughs> that, that, that the ladies are, are, are smartest, okay? And so we see whether something like this, you know, can be done scientifically or not. But it, 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 it turns out that, that uh, before the year 2006, which is not uh, that far away from us, uh, most of the scientists and mathematicians we found that this is probably uh, almost impossible, okay, for, for different reasons, which I you know, cannot tell. But, uh, for those of you who are mathematicians, this is talk about something related to what we call inverse scattering, the thickness of the scattering and so on. And so this would be regarded as impossible uh, until in the year 2006, there happens to be two papers that appear in the nature, the journal called Science about the same time, the same issue, that they proposed a method I can achieve that. And it happens that in fact three years before that year 2003, there were already a group of mathematicians that have already basically done the same thing, although they're using a different language. And, and more precisely for these uh, physicists, they're talking about what we call the Maxwell equation, which deal with waves, while the mathematicians solve the same problem, what we call the Poisson equations, which deal with electrostatics. But the idea is very similar. But uh, since these are very technical, and therefore I will not tell you exactly how the mathematics work, but the idea is like this. So basically, uh, mainly this uh, uh, was a John Pentry. He suggests that, hey, why don't we tr try to make something like the Harry Potter book? And the way he make it is that to say, let me have a, uh, a clock, okay? And this clock is uh, represented just schematically by 
a basically a, 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 a cylindrical type of a uh, shaped object. And what it does is that it would guide wave around it in this way. So the light comes in, it will go around a certain domain and come back in a straight line and, and so are others. So, and so, so every line will go, go like this. And, and, and it turns out that uh, the contribution of what's a pantry is that it gives you a mathematical recipe or tell you how you can design a material that can guide light around an object, around a domain. And the mathematics is not that easy, but uh, he showed how it can be done. Now, on the right-hand side, I'm showing a numerical simulation. This is not a cartoon. This is a serious simulation solving the wave equations for Maxwell equation. Just simulating how light may come through this material suggested by John Pendry and, and what will happen to it. Now, what will happen to it when wave comes in? Light is a wave. Light comes in, it will be guided around this domain and come back to the other side as if there were nothing there. Now, imagine that you are standing there or there. This is a, what we call a ray picture. Okay? This is a wave picture. Okay? Then I would find that the wave has not been disturbed. If a wave passed through an object that has not been disturbed, you would not know that that thing is there. And in fact, this circular region in which light is purposely guided around, the light and wave never enter that region. That means that no matter what I put in, that object would never touch the wave, and therefore you would not know what is ever is inside. And therefore, you can put a cat inside, you can put a dog inside, you can put Harry Potter inside. You would simply see nothing. Okay? So this is a very ingenious way to do immersibility. Now, let me emphasize again that this way is simply by enclosing an object with a, with a, a clock, so to speak. That object itself has not been touched. I'm not modifying the object. I'm simply <coughs> modifying the space around the object to, to create immersibility. So this is the same idea as the invisible wall. Now, but however, uh, in fact, when I read that paper in 2006, I was so excited that I spent days and nights thinking about it. Now, but, um, but this is certainly a, a, one of the most beautiful ideas I've seen in my life, but, but I think this is not yet the complete picture. Because if you think about Harry Potter, now Harry Potter wears a cloak around himself, and what he wants to do is that he doesn't want himself to be seen by you. For example, if I have a cloak, I wear around myself, you don't see me. But in Harry Potter's concept, you don't see him, he can see you. Now this is the way, this kind of asymmetry is what gives him the advantage. You don't see me, but I can see you. Now, but imagine that if uh, Mr. Harry Potter is surrounded not by his cloak, but by this kind of clock. You know that this clock works because no wave enter the region surrounding him. So what that means is that you don't see him, but he sees nothing. He cannot see anything because the reason that you can't see him is because I created a region of space in which no information enters the space. Of course, if no information inside the space, you cannot detect him, but he detects nothing at all. Now, so this type of clock it works. It is by definition a immersibility clock, but it creates no advantage for someone inside the clock. Because you don't see him, but he is completely blind. And so you ask then, what's the purpose of creating someone who is immersible but who is blind? Now so, and then the question that comes to me is, is there any way that I can create advantage by making something invisible so that you cannot see me, but I can see you? Is that possible at all? Okay, so this is the question that uh, I pose to my students and postdocs, and it uh, happens that uh, they uh, end up uh, to, to have a, uh, a solution. Okay, like this is that. Now, but before I tell you how we solve that problem, let me just uh, try to explain to you uh, just heuristically how things work, works, although I, I'm not putting in any equation at all. So what the thing works is that it is a mathematical transformation that, that creates a domain of space in which there is a material in which light and wave is guided around a domain. So light does not travel in a straight line, but in fact light is traveling in a curved line. Now, 
Uh, this is not something that is absolutely uh, difficult to understand. The reason being that, at least in this part of the world, this happens all the time. Now, in a very hot desert, uh, you have a particular phenomenon called the mirage. What it means is that normally light, for example, in this room, in which the temperature is pretty much uniform, light travel in a straight line. But uh, in a certain location in which there is a very rapid temperature change in air, uh, a typical case would be in a desert in which the, the fl desert floor is very hot. Okay? And you find that, in fact, light uh, can go in a curved manner. And the reason that that can happen uh, takes a little bit of physics to explain. But basically, in physics, we say that the path of light is, in fact, governed by what something called, called the refractive index. If the refractive index is uniform, light travel in a straight line. If the refractive index changes in the path of a light, light would change the direction. A very typical example would be the glasses that I'm wearing. The fact that why my glasses can, can help me to see better is because the glass that I have and the glass that you have have a refractive index of bigger than one. And therefore, when light comes in, the direction gets changes. And because of that, I can use simple a piece of glass and by, by, by you know, um, a particular curved surface, I can make light to converge. In that case, I'm making a microscope or making a, a, a focusing lens. Or I can make light to diverge. And in that case, I'm making all kinds of glasses and so on. And so this is the principle behind going from a microscope to a telescope. Okay? Simply because when light comes in, when it encounters refractive interchange, the direction changes. In the very special case in which the, you have encountered this situation, now it turns out that, that air, uh, of course, has a particular density. But the density of air actually depends on the temperature. And if you have a higher temperature, the density of air becomes somewhat less than that of a lower temperature. And when the density of air is lower, in fact, this refractive index becomes slightly uh, smaller. And because of this uh, 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 change in refractive index from colder air to cooler air, then in fact, the light can, 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 can go in a curve. And, and so if you look at the mathematics of how this so-called invisibility was achieved, then you will see that, in fact, the principle behind is quite similar to that of a mirage. And in fact, in this material, the refractive index of that material is also changing as a function of distance, depending on where you are. And because of that change in the refractive index, it can guide light uh, around uh, a certain domain. And, and so you see that the physical principle, or at least the guidance principle, is not particularly difficult to understand. But however, the difficulty lies in the following fact that uh, in order for a invisibility cook to function, what it requires is not only that light travels in a curved manner in one direction. It requires light to travel in a curved manner, and in fact, not in an arbitrary way, in exactly the same way that light comes in, go around to and come back in a straight line in every direction. And that has become very, very difficult. And that problem, mathematically, is so difficult that people can solve it only in 2006, after many, many years of uh, due diligence. Okay. And of course, I just, uh, just reiterate what I have said, that, uh, that the whole point of making something invisible is to, to fool other people. You want to make light that comes in, and it should be scattered by you, absorbed by you. But instead, I guide light around yourself, and, and then so that light can pass through you uh, as if you're not there. And so the principle have to be coming up some, something that I must change the path of light. And when light encounter anything that have the refractive index, that's not one, for example, encounter glass, then direction will change. And uh, the mirage effect is a more advanced form that is because in that case, the refractive index is not just going from, from 1 to 1.5, but instead it has a, a, a uh, continuous change. And, and thereby, you can curve the light.
Now here I'm showing a cartoon, and if you look at a more microscopic, for example, we look at the universe and atomic level, then you ask ourselves, why should light change direction or be the, 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 the light transport be modified when I encounter an object? Now it turns out that all material, including you and me and the table and so on, they all make up of atoms and molecules. And, and these atoms and molecules, uh, you know, loosely speaking, you can assume that they are like very tiny uh, resonators, springs, and so on. Actually, when light comes in contact, pass through material, the light is in fact driving these uh, atoms and molecules to vibrate. Electrons are, are changing. And once they interact, in fact, this kind of coupling, the light is talking to the molecule and it talks to each other. It slow, slows down the light. And in fact, because of this slowing down, the speed of light changes. In fact, it is of light that changes that, that induces uh, in this, uh, um, this change in the direction of light when light encounters in a particular object. Okay. Now, but however, actually it, it comes back uh, to the question is that suppose that we want to achieve this particular immersibility, you say that what's so big deal? You know, I can just put in some material, the material is going to slow down light in this particular way, and I know that by doing a, a, a gradient and index, I can guide light in the curve. So what's so big deal about when, or why it's so difficult uh, to, to uh, achieve this? Then it, it turns out that in order to do something like this, to make something invisible, uh, we know how to do it mathematically, but it turns out that the material that's required have some very, very unusual properties. First of all, the material has to be what we call anisotropic, meaning that that material behaves not the same when light comes in this way and that way. And it has to have a equal response to electric field and magnetic field. And in physics textbook, they call it the permittivity and permissibility. But don't worry about these terms. What that means is that a light, an EM wave, have two parts, two components, electric field and magnetic field. And normally, a material react to them independently. Okay. But this material must have a condition that the material must react to light in an equal manner, okay, to E field and B field, which is very, very difficult to achieve. And also, the uh, material have to be position dependent. And first problem is that the refractive index, in order for this uh, immersibility to occur, have to become infinity in some position and zero in other position, which is so tough that there's nothing like this in nature that we can find. And I can assure you that if some of you can find in nature, you can dig up a, 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 a somewhere a material that can satisfy these conditions, you will become very rich because these things are surely much more expensive and more, much more valuable than gold and diamond. But, uh, but they are so difficult to satisfy this condition that nothing in nature we know of satisfy this requirement. And what do we do? So we have to make it by hand. And therefore, scientists are making them. And these are these materials that are made purposely by hand, uh, by machines, by PhDs, by some of you in the audience to have these very special properties. And these are very, very difficult to make. And, and that is why up to now, a lot of these talk about immersibility, they are okay in principle, but in practice, these things are a little bit too difficult to make in, in practice, at least not in a large scale. And we give these uh, uh, materials a name called metamaterials. Meta means something that can, I have the wrong spelling there, Mr. T. Metamaterial means that something that go beyond go beyond normal materials. Okay. And so this is again another lesson that we learned. There's no free lunch in life. If you want to create some amazing effects, then you want you need some material that amazingly complex. Okay. Now, uh, and just one more slide about the physics. I just talked in our previous, previous slide that white light, when it encounter material, it will change direction. This is because light couple it talk to the atoms and therefore the atoms slow down the light. And the way that this main material works is the same. The atoms given by God or Allah doesn't satisfy that condition. Let us make some artificial things that can talk to the light and slow light down in the way that I want to. Okay? And, and that's why these are very funny structures are in fact features that tell light to slow down in the way that you want them to slow down. Okay? 
And, and of course, but of course we say that why do they need this special shape? And that is because we work out all the mathematics. Okay, and that is a very tough part, which I'm not going to talk about. And, and so now compared to my own story, I would say that uh, the way that was uh, taught to us in 2004 to create invisibility is to surround an object by a cloak that can guide right around it. The nice thing is that it works, but the cool thing about it is not so good is that because anything inside is blind. So I want to ask myself, can I have an object here? The light comes in, you can see it, but, but can I look in a, 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 a cooking device so that it actually cancels the scattering so that you won't see me, but however, my device will not enclose me so that you don't see me when I see you. Can that be done? Now, uh, uh, yeah, this is something which is, uh, I don't mean you to understand what I say, but mathematically, uh, what is being done is that I try to, you see an object because the object scatter light. I, I try to make another object in which you can scatter light in an opposite way so that the scattering cancel each other. So the physics principle behind very simple. So basically, one plus minus one equal to zero. That's what I'm doing, okay? But mathematically, it is equivalent to folding space to itself and uh, but that, that would be a bit too much for this one, so I'll probably skip this one. But just trust me that it works, okay? Now let me just show you that uh, how it works, okay? Now on the left hand side, I'm showing you that I have an object with a particular shape. Now this is not a cartoon again, it is a, 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 a serious computer simulation solving on the Maxwell equation. So on the left hand side, I have an object and light and wave comes in. And the reason that you can see that object is because the object is there, it scatters away, light being scattered. And because of the light scattering, you know that where the object is, and you know that the shape of the object. And so light scattering is the reason why you can see an object. Now the right hand side, I demonstrate that I can, uh, with a lot of mathematics and then computer simulation, that I can design an object in which the scattering of this object actually cancels that object. Now this, on the left hand side, is the object by itself. On the right hand side, is that I put my, I call it an anti-object, okay? Close this object. And, and then you will see that once I put it here, then the scattering becomes more or less cancelled. And therefore the wave simply pass through it as if you have nothing there. And so that if I'm sitting there, then I will be able to see nothing because light is just coming in as if there's nothing there. And therefore this thing, becomes immiscible when I put my anti object close to it. Now, but if I compare with uh, what we have before, in this particular method, you see that light is not disturbed. I can put an object inside, but note that that object inside doesn't touch the wave, and therefore, you have no information about the surrounding. But in this way, uh, Notice that that wave actually enters the object. And therefore, in principle, you can put a small detector inside and therefore you know what's going on. And therefore now, this is an advantage that you don't see me, but I can see you. Okay, so this is a way of what we call remote hooking, actually, that works in this way. And uh, I just want to show you, uh, just, just in case some of you may be interested in more details, that this method works for any kind of input. It can be a plane wave or it can be a, a, a point source or you can have two objects here, I can make two objects disappear at the same time and so it can be done. Now, uh, and of course something even more uh, challenging is that now in the Harry Potter's uh, movie, in fact Harry Potter is not entirely cloaked but he just chose to, uh, to hide his own body but he wants to uh, sew his head. Can it be done? Uh, Yes, I just show you a simulation again that I can design an anti-object which purposely is designed to only hide part of an object. Now, for example, this is a computer simulation that I have an object that if I want to, I can make the whole thing immiscible, but now I choose just to hide uh, three quarters of it so that what's left behind is precisely the same as part of that object. And I can choose. I, I can choose to hide, hide half an object, one quarter of an object, or 55% of object, 
it can be done. Okay. Uh, I think in the interest of time, maybe I skip some details. And then now I want to move in something which is a little bit more difficult. Now at the point in which we finish about this so-called remote clocking, in other words, I have an object here, I put something there and make it municipal. Then I ask myself, what have I done? What have I done? What have I done is that I want to have an object here, and then I put some other object which I designed to cancel the scattering. But mathematically, what happens is that, in fact, I'm converting space, an object, into air, optically. So it's like I have A, A is like A, B is like B, but A and B together, I purposely designed make B to make A and these two together become something like air. So in a way, in fact, I am creating an illusion. I have an object, I place some object close to it, I make the whole space like air. So this is in fact an illusion. So I ask myself if I can put an object here to make this object look like air. Can I make an object here to make this object look like something else? For example, if I have an apple here, can I put something here to make this apple look like a banana? Can I do that? Okay. Now, invisibility means that I put something here to make it look like air. If I can make it look like air, can I make it look like something else? Is it a mathematically well-defined problem? Can it be solved? Okay. The answer is yes, it can be. And so, the problem is posed like this. Suppose I have an object here. I want to put another object here. And I want the total scattering or the reaction to light of this project together to be equal to something else. If I can do that, I'm creating an illusion. Let me show you simulations that it can be done. I want to create something that I can change a spoon into a cup, optically. Okay. So on the left-hand side, I have a spoon. And wave comes in, and the spoon will scatter like a spoon. So you see a spoon. Okay? So this is a shadow left by a spoon. On my right-hand side here, I'm showing that I have a cup because the cup has a different shape. And therefore, it scatters light in a different way. And therefore, you see a cup as a cup. Here, I just showed you that I can design something. That when I put my illusion device on top of my spoon, you will see that this is a spoon. But when I put this on top of that, the scattering becomes that of a cup. And therefore, if I am an observer outside, I'm a detector, then although you have a spoon there, I would think that I'm seeing a cup. And therefore, I can show you that in fact I can, I can do an illusion. Okay. Yeah, I think this is a, a slight movie that I showed you. That for example, as a fish, uh, this got like a fish, I can put something there that I can make the fish look like nothing, the way simply pass through. This is what we call invisibility. And then by modifying my device there, then I have a star there. By modifying my, my, my fish, I can make my fish look like a star. And, and so it depends on how I design my, 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 my what's so called my, my, my material. Uh, I think in the interest of time, we best leave some time for questions. And I, I just, very quickly, I just want to uh, tell you that, uh, that in the title, I, I say that I can make Harry Potter's cloak, and I can also create an illusion that looks like the, uh, uh, the King Cross uh, platform. In which, now the King Cross platform is an idea, something like this, in which I, I see there is a, 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 a door that is closed, but actually that door is closed only as an illusion, but actually the passage open. And therefore, for those of you who believe your eyes, we don't want to pass through it. But for those of you who have faith, you know that actually the, the door is not there, but I can just simply walk through anything, but nothing is there. Okay? Now, can it be done? I just want to show you that the illusion concept can achieve that. And so this is a, 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 a case in which I won't go into details, but just want to show you that, that I have an a, a, a object that in fact I, I can by design create a space that as if this object is occupying that space, although that object is not there. And uh, so maybe I, yeah. So this is a uh, again a computer simulation. So that I have a a a a a passage there, 
uh, that is open. So that actually I can walk through there. So nothing stops you physically from moving through. But however, by tuning some, some material parameters, in some frequencies I can block the wave pass through. If you block the wave, then in fact for an observer there, you find that the wave is refracted. So that you think that there is something there, although it is entirely open. So in a way that I am in fact uh, uh, creating uh, this type of uh, illusion effect. Okay. Now, uh, so just a brief summary, I'll just tell you that, that uh, what this type of new material, combat material, what they can do is that they can create illusion for you so that something can be transformed into almost like nothing. It's called invisibility, and it can, like an object can become some other things. Okay. And, and so the interesting implication is that suppose that you go to court and, and, and prove that uh, no, I did something or did not do something in the picture so that you are there and you are not there. Uh, I can really challenge you today, maybe, have you proven something that, that, that you can take a picture? Picture is just capturing the photons, right? Then that in fact uh, there is some, something philosophical behind. Now there's also uh, something interesting is that for a small number of people in the audience who can read Chinese, <laughs> uh, you know that there is this probably most famous Chinese novel, Hong Lao Meng. In fact, there is a poem that says that uh, this, what it means is that uh, something is not true can be true, something is not real can be real, something is not there can actually be there. Okay, so, so what we are doing today has been predicted a long, long time ago by people, people who write novels who are more imaginative. Now before I close, I just want to uh, say something, uh, maybe I could skip other things, uh, that in the very early uh, slides that I'm showing, that I'm telling you that there are two types of concepts of immersibility. One type is that of Harry Potter's, I put something around myself, I become immersible. Notice that this does not require any power source. This is a passive device. And so are the, the so-called remote cooking, and so are the um, so-called uh, illusion device. They're all passive. My material is there, I simply need to place the material where it should be. I do not need to put in any energy. That thing can make yourself invisible. But if you go and look at what the James Bond movie, the 007, this uh, so-called advanced British technology, they push a button and then the car can become visible and invisible. Now this is something that's apparently not a passive, but a, in fact a, what we call an active technology and that something is a turning on power to change your look, to change what it looks like. Now, the question is, can it be done? I just want to show you that, yes, it can be. Uh, again, there's some technical paper we publish. Uh, don't worry too much about that. Uh, well, I just want to show you a slide, again, a simulation. And, and so, now this is a very simple situation in which I have simple cylinder. I have cylinder sitting there, and light comes in, the light is being focused by the cylinder, and well, you see the cylinder. I'm just showing to you a, a, a method that we propose that I, I can put some active sources uh, around a certain, now this is a, a simple cylinder. Here, I have nothing, okay? I don't have a cylinder, but I put in some, at each of these white points there, I put in a power source, a power source and, and put an antenna attached to the power source so that my antenna can radiate away. And we can solve the problem so that, that as long as I know what is the coming in the way, I can define the uh, sources so that the antenna are radiating uh, in a way so that for an external observer, it looks like there is exactly a cylinder. Now so that this, I have no cylinder there. There's nothing there. I just have some sources, and I can use this source to make an empty space look like a cylinder. And in fact, also notice that I create a region that the wave doesn't come in. I can put anything inside that region. I can put a Harry Potter inside that region, and Harry Potter will look like a cylinder. Now, but this type of method has its own limitation. The limitation actually requires that you must have a power source. It's not a big deal because uh, you, know, you have to pay some money, you have, you have batteries, and you can do it. But the real challenge of this method, the active one, is that you have to know the incident wave. You have to know the wave before you know how to react to it. Now, there are two ways that you can do it. One is that your friend, your enemy, is actually your friend. So 
when they are coming to attack you with the missile, they will call you beforehand that I am using this frequency. I am using 65.5 gigahertz. <laughs> Please react to me. Then you can do it. But normally your, 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 your enemies will not call you up before they, they, they shoot at you. And, and so the other way to do it is that you put in detectors and you detect them and get the information before you react. And, and, and there are problems with that because then your detectors must react very, very quickly before you never know when your, 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 your not so good friend is going to shoot at you. And, and so these are limitations. But, but in principle, you can also push a button and make something disappear, push a button, make something, you know, make a car look like air, or make something look like something else. But the, the technical challenge is that you must know what other people are, are, are shooting at you beforehand, or you must detect the things fast enough, which is not so easy. Okay, maybe I think the time is running up, and uh, uh, but, uh, but before that, I, let me just uh, say this, which is very important is that I am a theorist, and a lot of people working in this area, they are either mathematicians or theorists. And uh, so we solve equations. But in real life, there are a lot of technical issues. But due to the limit of time, I won't go into it. But I just want to tell you that a lot of these things are now, in a way, useful on a piece of paper. But to make it usable and, and useful in real life, there's still a very big gap in which the gap is between what we can do on paper and what we can do in practice. But for those of you interested, I would be more than happy to elaborate to see what are the challenges that we are facing. But with that, let me stop here and let me thank you for your attention. Excuse me. Oh, that is an excellent question. And actually, this is the first issue that uh, I want to talk about is the bandwidth. It turns out that you can prove that if you want to have perfect invisibility, you have no bandwidth. You can only do for one frequency. But if you can uh, relax the condition a little bit so that I, I can be uh, maybe 90% or 95% immiscible, then you can have some bandwidth. And so uh, how much bandwidth you have depends on, on, on how precise you want to be immiscible. But there is something called the causality condition in optics, that if you want to have something that is absolutely immiscible, you cannot have a bandwidth, only for one frequency. Oh yeah, there are quite a number of people working on that. And uh, well, first of all, these materials, they're all man-made. And uh, so it's not so easy to make, it, make this material to be on a flexible substrate. But there are, other, there are a lot of people who are doing it on, on polymers and so on. And they call it kind of conformal clock, which is in principle possible. Okay. But uh, that would make a difficult problem actually more difficult. But in principle, it can be done. Now, this is, a, again, a very good question. In fact, the condition for what we call immiscibility must be that. I don't care where you put the observer and how many of you. And they all together, and they, they can talk to each other, and you cannot detect that object. Only that can be qualified to be uh, truly invisible. And in fact, going back to my earlier slide, talking about stealth, most of the stealth is that it comes in this direction, but if you have a detector in that direction, I can see you. 
immiscibility requires much more than that. I would require that I do not care about what kind of a source. It can be a plane wave, a point source, or a Gaussian beam. It can be coherent, incoherent, as long as that frequency. I do not care how many observers you put in, and they can talk to each other and do correlations. You cannot detect that object. Only that qualified to be immiscible. Oh, no, I, honestly speaking, I, I, I think it would be a very bad idea to apply this to military aircraft. Uh, the reason being that, in fact, uh, as I think the, the first gentleman asked the question, is that we do have a, a bandwidth limitation. And if you are really doing a very good stealth, <coughs> invisible, your bandwidth is very narrow. Now, even for stealth, the bandwidth is also not very wide because there is some fundamental principle that it cannot be very wide. But true invisibility, because it is a more demanding condition than stealth, the bandwidth is even more narrow. And, and therefore, military purpose, uh, you, you probably do not want to fool around with this, in particular for the optical frequency, because the second thing I want to talk about is, in fact, losses. And, once you have losses or dissipation in a material, some, something disappears, and, and therefore, if you have a good enough detector, you can always detect that something is missing, and therefore, you always know that, 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 that you have an object there. And therefore, once you have loss, you cannot have perfect immiscibility. And there's no method I can know of for material in optical frequency that are completely dissipationless. This is simply not possible. And therefore, it would not be a very good idea to make your aircraft immiscible in the... Uh, but, however, I'm talking about passive clock. While in the active clock, there is possible that I can make an aircraft immiscible in the optical frequency. But the problem is that, as I have said, your enemy must tell you beforehand what kind of wave they're sending in. Is it coherent or incoherent? If I don't, I would not be able to create my sources to uh, you know, screen you out. And I will have a time lag between I detect you and I react. And that time lag may be bad enough so that you would already know that I am there. And therefore, you should at me. And, and I have to be honest that there is still a very big gap between this and something that you can use to you know, protect for your national defense, for the good or for the bad. The scattering object, now, there are two concepts. Uh, for the cloak, Pantry's cloak in the 206, that cloak itself is invisible. For the one that I'm talking about, the cloak itself in, in, is visible, the object is, is visible, they put together, A plus B becomes invisible. Yeah, they would, both of them come together, becomes invisible, because they annihilate each other. For the, the spoon, I do not want to make the spoon invisible. I want to make the spoon look like a cup. I can make the spoon invisible, but the point is that I can go beyond that. I can create an illusion that I can make an object look like some other object. And therefore, for this particular slide, I'm not making the spoon invisible. I'm making the spoon look like something else. I can make it invisible if I want to. Okay. Thank you.